पॉइंट वन ओ ह्यूमनिटी बी माइंडफुल ऑफ योर लॉर्ड हु क्रिएटेड यू फ्रॉम सिंगल सोल एंड फ्रॉम इट ही क्रिएटेड इट्स मेट एंड थ्रो बोथ ही स्प्रेड काउंटलेस मैन एंड वोमेन एंड बी माइंडफुल ऑफ अल्लाह इन हुज नेम यू अपील टू वन एन अदर एंड ऑनर फैमिली टाइज surely allah is ever watchful over you 4.2 give orphans their wealth when they reach maturity and do not exchange your worthless possessions for their valuables nor cheat them by mixing their wealth with your own for this would be indeed a great sin 4.3 if you fear you might fall to give if you might fail to give orphan women their due rights if you were marry them if you were to marry them then marry other women of your choice two three or four but if you are afraid you will fail to maintain justice then content yourself with one of those born women in your possession this way you are less likely to commit injustice 4.4 give women you wed their due dowries graciously but if they wear some of it willingly then you may enjoy it freely with clear conscience 4.5 do not entrust incapable among your dependents with your wealth which allah has made a means of support for you but feed and clothe them from it and speak to them kindly 4.6 test the competence of the orphans until they reach a marriageable age then if you feel they are capable of sound judgment return their wealth to them and do not consume it wastefully and hastily before they grow up to demand it if the guardian is well off they should not make compensation they should not take compensation but if the guardian is poor let them take a reasonable provision when you give orphans back their property call in witness and sufficient is allah as they as a vigilant reckoner 4.7 for men there is a share in their parents and close relatives live and for women there is a share in what their parents and close relatives live whether it is little or much these are obligatory shares 4.8 if non inheriting non inheriting relatives or funds or the needy are present at the time of distribution offer a small provision from it and speak to them kindly 4.9 let the guardians to be as concerned for the orphans as they would if they were to die and leave their own helpless children behind so let them be mindful of allah and speak equitably 4.10 indeed those who unjustly consume orphans wealth in fact consume nothing but fire in their bellies and they will be burned in a blazing hell 4.11 allah commands you regarding your children the share of male will be twice that of a female if you leave only to or more females their share is two thirds of the estate 
but if there is only one female her shall be one one half each parent is entitled to one sixth if you leave offspring but if you are childless your parents are only heirs then your mother will receive one third but if you leave siblings then your mother will receive one sixth after fulfillment fulfillment of bequests and debts be be fair to your parents and children but as you do not fully know who is more beneficial to you this is an obligation from allah surely allah is all knowing all wise you inherit half of what your wives leave if they are childless but if they have children then your share is one fourth of the estate after the fulfillment of bequests and debts and your wives will inherit one fourth of what you leave if you are childless but you have children then your wives will receive one eighth of your estate after the fulfillment of bequest and debts and if a man or a woman leaves neither parents nor children but only brother or a sister from their mother side they will each inherit one sixth but if they are more than one they all will share one third of the estate after the fulfillment of bequest and debts without harm to their heirs this is a commandment of allah and allah is all knowing most forbearing 4.13 these entitlements are the limits set by allah whoever obeys allah and his messenger will be admitted to gardens under which rivers flow to stay there forever there is the ultimate that is the ultimate triumph one for but whoever disobeys allah and his messenger and exceeds their limit will be cast to hell to stay there forever and will suffer a humiliating punishment one five as for those your women who commit illegal intercourse call for witness from among yourselves if they testify confine the offenders to their homes until they die or allah ordains a different way for them 4.16 and two among you who commit that sin discipline them if they repent and mend their ways relieve them surely allah is ever accepting of repentance most merciful 4.17 allah only accept the repentance of those who commit evil ignorantly or recklessly then repent soon after allah will pardon them and allah is all knowing all wise one eight however repentance is not accepted from those who knowingly persist in sin until they start dying and then cry now i repent nor those who die as disbelievers for them we have prepared a painful punishment 4.19 oh believers it is not permissible for you to inherit women against their will or mistreat them to make them return some of the dowry as a ransom for divorce unless they are found guilty of adultery treat them fairly if you happen to dislike them you may hate something which allah turns into a great blessing 20 if your desire if your desire to replace a wife with another you have given the former even a stack of gold as as a dowry 
do not take any of it back would you still take it unjustly and very sinfully Four point two one. How could you take it back after having enjoyed each other intimately, and she has taken from you a firm commitment? Two two. Do not marry former wives of your fathers except what was done previously. It was indeed a shameful, despicable, and evil practice. Four point two three. Also forbidden for you. Also forbidden to you for marriage are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your paternal and maternal aunts, your brothers' daughters, your sisters' daughters, your foster mothers, your foster sisters, your mother-in-law, your stepdaughters under your guardianship. If you have consummated marriage with their mothers. But if you have not, then you can marry them, nor the wives of your sons, or two sisters together at the same time, except what was done previously. Surely Allah is all for for giving most merciful. Also forbidden are married women, except female captives in your possession. This is Allah's commandment to you. Lawful to you are all beyond this. As long as you seek them with wealth in a legal marriage, no fornication. Give those you have consummated marriage with their due dowries. It is permissible to be mutually gracious regarding the said dowry. Surely Allah is all knowing, all wise. Two five. But if any of you cannot afford afford to marry a free believing woman, then let him marry a believing bond woman possessed by one of you. Allah knows best the state of your faith and theirs. You are from one another, so marry them with the permission of their owners, giving them their dowry in. Fairness. If they are chaste, neither promiscuous nor having secret secret affairs. If they commit indecency after marriage, they receive half the punishment of free women. This is for those of you who fear falling into sin. But if you are patient, it is better for you. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful.